came from? It came from the feminist movement. Right, yeah. During the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, the woman started to push the, the man out the house. It That's started, right. It started with the white woman. She says, I can do things better than you. Right. And then now the black woman took on that. She didn't know about the Bible like that. So she took on that and said, hey, I can do the same thing as she can do. So we, the women started to push the man out the house and they took on a role as a man. Right. Cause the head of the house supposed to be the man, not the woman. out of the equation because a lot of people look at us like oh you know guys the one that's saying that no it's the Heavenly Father speaking to his child that's how you have to look at it our father Matthew 6 and 9 says who art in heaven so he's the father what are we we're the children so now the father is speaking to his child his daughter speaking to you go ahead Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. Go ahead. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Why is God saying that, Sister Shea? You should not wear, well, uh, a woman should not wear things pertaining to a man. What's the pertain part? I want to say not equality type of thing, but it's just a respectful. But because you know why he says pertain means belong. The woman shall not wear that which belong to a man, because why? He created the man first. He gave a man a dress coat. He put pants on a man, and then he created the woman. He gave her a skirt to wear. That's right. So it separates the two. And they're not equal. They're different. Absolutely. So that's how God dresses his children. Like, for example, you have children? Well, you have niece and nephews, right? Or you have a, you have a mother, right? So your mother dressed you a certain way, right? She said, you ain't going out the house looking like that. Right, Sister Shay? Uh, you ain't going out the house looking like that, right? Absolutely, right? So what do you think God says? He don't want us going out the house or going around the other nations looking like them. He says, you got to look different for them because God says, you are holy people, which is separate from everybody else. God hand-built Adam, hand-built, custom-made. Then he built the woman from man, right? He custom made Adam. Then the woman come from the man, right? So he made them and he gave them a choice. He gave them law, statutes, and commandments what to do. Bert. What happens is we follow everybody else. Right now, we got a point where we have to follow the Bible. Well, check this out. But hold up, thought right there. We should all have the same belief, sis. We should all have. Give me Ephesians four, real quick. Four, verse four. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. And then we gotta go back on that. I'm gonna show you how glorious it is in the eyes of the Most High God for His daughters and His sons to dress appropriately. God loves that thing. It's a sweet savor unto Him. I'm gonna show you. Watch this. Read Ephesians chapter four. Stay with me, Sister Shay. Stay with me. I got you. I'm gonna answer every question you got. Go ahead, come on. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 4. Come on. There is one body Go ahead. and one spirit. Go ahead. Even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. Sis, you see that, sis? We got one body, one mind, and we should have one spirit. The spirit it's talking about is the Holy Spirit, which is the Bible. Go ahead. One Lord. Go ahead. One faith. Go ahead. One baptism. We need to be unified with our maker. Right. right now we're not unified. We're like rebellious children doing whatever the, whatever the heck we want to do. Right. We got to be unified with the person that created us, the Heavenly Father. So God give us a dress code. He says you must dress appropriately, sis. And we all got to be unified. So if the Christian church is telling you one thing, you need to leave that. Because the Bible says we got to have one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Right. We know what God looks like. We know what he requires of us. And we know what we should do. We can't de deviate from that. Go back to Deuteronomy 22, and then we're going to go to Esther. 
Go ahead, read. Come on. Deuteronomy 22 and verse 5. Come on. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Why? Because God dressed you appropriately. He said, I created you. He's the author of beauty. So he said, I designed you this way. I designed the man that way because why? I have a zipper in front of my pants because God gave me an instrument to use when I use the bathroom. A woman don't have that instrument, correct? A man has a penis. A woman says, come close, come close. A man has a penis. A woman has a vagina, right? So it's a difference. So God says, since you're a man, I'm going to give you a tire to where you can unzip and use the bathroom. A woman, she has a dress because why? Everything, she has internal organs. So they have to be aired out, sis. That's why God says it's not appropriate for a woman to wear pants, right? That's where yeast infections come from, right? That's a lack of oxygen. Come on, read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Watch this, sis, sis. Stay focused. We know who she is. Stay focused. Stay with me. Stay with me. Come close. I like, I like, I, I like the dialect. Come on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Now, sis, if I come out here preaching the gospel and I had a, a dress on, you would think something's wrong with me. But if I told you about the Bible, sis, we're not supposed to do that, and then I'm doing it, what does that look like for me? I look hypocritical. Yeah. Yeah, but I can't reach those in righteousness if I'm unrighteous. If I'm unrighteous, how can I reach? If I'm unrighteous, how can I reach those that are unrighteous? Somebody got to be righteous. That's Somebody right. got to know what righteous is. Right. So I have to be righteous to reach the unrighteous. Yes. I can't tell you to do something and I'm not doing it. Right. We do. You know black people. Black people always say, man, he a, he a hypocrite. Oh, he's full of crap. So we can't do that, sis. Come on, read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Go ahead. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. The Bible says, says, all that do so, God doesn't like that. First Timothy 2 and 9 and then Esther. I'm going to show you how glorious it is, sis. It's glorious and appropriate because what happens? When you dress like that, there's some men out here that can't control themselves. Because they don't know how to control themselves without the Bible. So what happens? Yeah. But what you say? Say it again. Come, come close. Come close. I can't hear you. They, what they look at you as a what? They look at you as a piece of meat, right? They get sexually attracted to you, right? Because they see your shapes. They see your shape. So, Watch this, read. I'm going to show you that. Stay with me, sis. Stay with me. First Timothy you. chapter 2 and verse 9. Come on. In like manner also. Watch this. That woman. Watch, watch this. That woman adorned themselves in modest apparel. See that, sis? What's modesty mean? Appropriate. God says, are you my princess? If you're my princess, I should dress you up like a princess, correct? Right. Because Christ, who's the king? Christ. Who's the king? Christ. Christ is the king. So Christ is the king, his kids are priests and pr prince and princesses. So if I'm a prince and you my sister, you should be a princess. That's right. So I should have the pants on going through the community establishing order. And you, you, you have your dress on, taking care of things that pertain to the house. That's right. Taking care of things that pertain to the children. Helping the men rebuild the nation. Right. Right? So now, read 1 Timothy 2, verse 9. Come on. In like manner also, that woman adorned themselves in modest apparel. Because God, the author of beauty, created that way. That's right. That's why he designed it that way. Right. He said, you're going to wear pants, my son. My daughter, you're going to wear a dress. And there's no crossing the two. That's right. It stays that way. But you know where pants came from? It came from the feminist movement. Right. Yeah. During the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, the woman started to push the, the man out the house. It That's started, right. It started with the white woman. She says, I can do things better than you. Right. And then now the black woman took on that. She didn't know about the Bible like that. So she took on that and said, hey, I can do the same thing as she can do. So we, the women started to push the man out the house, and they took on a role as a man. Right. Because the head of the house is supposed to be the man, not the woman. It's supposed to be the man, the woman, then the children as an order. That's right. So what happens is they push the feminist movement. You don't need that Negro. You don't need him. You can do it all better by yourself. You ever heard that? I can do bad all by myself. That's all that vibration they put out there that's evil, sis. Sis, stay, stay focused. Stay focused. Come on, read. That woman adorned themselves in modest apparel. Go ahead. With shame faces. Shame faces. What shame face? Now we're going on to the pants and to 
what you're supposed to do. Shame face. Okay, shame face. It's appropriate, appropriate. I mean, uh, shame faces. Uh, like a, uh, your peril is appropriate, but your shame face is not up in a man's face. What happens when a woman puts on pants? It puts the spirit of masculinity on her. That's right. That's why the sister right there going buck, crowing crazy. Yeah, she going crazy because why? That puts the spirit on them that I can overcome the man. That's right. So that's why the Lord says, like a uh, like a man, for example, if he puts on a woman's dress, what happens? He starts to become feminine. You hear that, sis? He starts to become feminine, right? Because it's a spirit that's behind everything that we do. Right. Yes. He does put spirits on them, but they can overcome those spirits if they want to. That's, she heard the gospel already. Read on. With shamefacedness yes. and sobriety. Go ahead. Sober-minded. Go ahead. Not with broided hair. All right. That's it right there. Now, give me Esther 13, 14. Absolutely. Come close. This is part of your salvation that you asked. Yeah. Yes. Say it again, come close. I can't hear you. Yeah. Uh-huh. Can we just asking that? Okay. Yes. Yes. Yes, so you know what sin is, right, sis? Sin? Yes, give me first John three and four. What is sin? Sin is anything wrong with God. I'm gonna share what the Bible defines what sin is. Watch this. First John three and four. Come on. First John chapter three verse four. Yep. Whosoever committed sin. Watch this, sister Shay. Transgressive also the law. Come on. For sin is the transgression of the law. Sin is breaking the laws of God. So if God give you a commandment like dress code, sis, and you go against that and say, you know what, I like pants because it's comfortable. Makes me look good. I can show, I can go, I can do my little shashe, whatever. It's attractive. God says you just broke the commandments of God. That's right. So we're not going to keep harping on the same thing. The choice is yours is to change it or not. That's right. So now, now once you change, now when you start to change and you take off the pants, right? Because they belong to men. Now you know that according to the scriptures. That's a sin against God. And what's the wages of sin, sis? Death. Death. Give me Romans 6.23. So why would you want to die? Why would you want to die? Do you want to die? You want everlasting life, right? Good master, he said. What must I do to get the uh, kingdom of heaven? What did he say? Let's go back there. We're going to stay basic. We're going to just stay basic with you so you can understand. So you say you want the kingdom of heaven, right? You don't want to die. Because the wages of sin or payment is death. So you keep continuing in sin. Continue in sin. What does Christ come to do? To do what? To let us continue in sin? No, not continue in sin. Be forgiven to us. Yes. Then we have a choice to make the same sin. Same cycle. But why would you want to continue on that same cycle? Do you want? Do you want to continue on the same cycle? It's apply application. It's all it is. Is application. Give me First Kings eight forty six. Yes, sir. All we got to do, sis, is just humble ourselves. We don't have to become proud against the Lord. All we got to say, you know what? I acknowledge my transgression. And all you got to do is just change. It's that easy. That's how easy it is to change. You know what? The Bible says this. This is what I think. Who's right? Who's wrong? The Bible is true. The Bible is the truth. So we're going to do what the Bible say. So we're not going to lean to our own understanding. That's right. Give me Proverbs 3 and 5 real quick. So we're going to understand that, sis. Whatever the Bible says... That's what we're going to do. We're not going to lean left or right. Because when we lean left or we lean right, this is the result. From leaning left or rocking right. We didn't follow the path straight that was in front of us. Right. We said, nah, we want to do our own thing. We resisted the Holy Ghost. And now look at us. We call ourselves African American, right? We call ourselves Native American. We call ourselves Puerto Rican and Dominican. Because we lost our identity for going left or going right. God says you got to go straight. That's right. Read. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. Go ahead. Trust in the Lord Come with on. all thine heart. Go ahead. And lean not unto thine own understanding. Trust in God with all your mind. Whatever the Bible says, we ain't going to question it. Verse. But we know it's the infallible words of God. Meaning it doesn't fail. Whatever God said, it accomplished. Deuteronomy 28 is right here, sis, in front of you. I showed you the curses earlier. 
on the flyer. This is all the curses that God said that was going to happen to our people for breaking the laws of God, for going your own direction. God said he destroyed his own people. That's a punishment for going outside of the commandments of God. Come on. Proverbs 3 verse 5. Come on. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. You got to trust in what the Bible saying, sis. We can't trust in our own self. We got to trust what the Bible say. The Bible says that, I won't question it. Come on. And lean not unto thine own understanding. Don't lean to your own understanding. Go ahead. In all thy ways. All what you do, sis. Everything, like you said earlier. Everything that we have to do, we have to what? Acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. Is this right or is this wrong? Let me go to the Bible. Can we eat pork, trip crab, or lobster? No, because the Bible says we're not supposed to eat that according to Leviticus 11 and 7 and verse 9. Go ahead. And he shall direct thy path. So now he'll direct you on your path because we got out the pathway. We went left. We went right. We started walking backwards. God says, no, you got to acknowledge him by keeping the commandments of God. That's how you reverence God, right. by keeping the commandments. And then he going to hear you, sis. Give me 31. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 31. Come on. Envy thou not the oppressor. That's what happened. We started to envy the oppressor. We wanted to be like them, the status quo. We wanted the money. We wanted the fame. We wanted the power. We like how things look on the other nation. That's how what happened. Come on. Envy thou not the oppressor. Go ahead. And choose none of his ways. His ways is the ways that we've been following. Catholicism is his ways. The Pentecostal church is his ways. That's right. The way we dress, that's his ways. So that's why we're coming out here to tell you, thus saith the Lord. Because his ways, in his mind, he thinks that it's right. And we follow him because we don't know the scriptures. That's right. Now we are here teaching you the scriptures. Now you got to follow what the way of God wants you to follow. What is nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models.